Let's talk about how blueprints become more complex in Unreal. Even if everything you can do in Unreal only takes one or two blueprint nodes, you still have to do a million things to get the game working. So that's still going to be a million blueprint nodes. I don't think this complexity is custom to blueprints, though. Coding has the same issue. The difference is that in coding, we teach people right from the start how to control complexity. Object-oriented coding is a way to control complexity. So we teach people how to do object-oriented coding before we teach them how to do coding. We teach them what an object is before we teach them what an if statement is. Because we understand that coding gets very complicated very, very fast. So you have to use every trick in the book to keep it as simple as possible. We don't have that culture in blueprinting, not yet anyway. So I figured I would teach you some basic tricks that will help you to keep your blueprints nice and tidy so that you won't bog down as you're progressing. And I know people bog down at different rates. Some people will get to the middle of their game and then bog down. Some people will bog down halfway through their first function. But these techniques should help you regardless of where you are on that spectrum. So here's the example. This is a ship construction game. Since it's a ship construction game, oh, it's prototypes, so pardon the art. Since it's a construction game, I need the ship to be able to spawn in an arbitrary number of systems at an arbitrary set of locations. Like, oh, I need to spawn in an engine here. I need to spawn in a reactor here, a connector here. Uh, I need to spawn in a, a, a cockpit here. The later I'll build the ability for the player to make this. I'll build the I'll build the the interactivity so the player can add and remove and change these these various pieces of the ships around. But before I get there, I need the ability to spawn a ship in in the first place. So I know that the first thing I need is the ability for a ship core to spawn in an arbitrary number of modules at arbitrary locations. And each of those modules is always going to be in one specific spot. So one of the things that I always do is I try and tidy up the data I need as much as possible. And in this case, it made a lot of sense to simply put it into a struct. Structs are one of your best friends. If you have a bunch of stuff that's always going to travel together, make it a struct, because that way it'll always be easy to pass it around and access it. In this case, we keep the class of the ship module we want to add, and we keep a transform. So that means that all of this stuff is just an array of those values. This is the class engine at this particular location. This is the class nub chain 3x 1f2 at this location. Because I put it all in the same place, we simply have an array of those. And that's exactly what I've done. If we come over into the ship core here, here it is. An array of ship module positions. All I need to do now is walk through that. I have a function that simply walks through all of them and instantiates them. And it's called instantiate. Here it is. Oh, oh, it's complicated. Well, the part we're talking about is just these three main nodes. We go through the defined modules array. And for each one, we spawn an actor in. We do that by breaking the ship module position apart, taking the class and the transform, and feeding it into the spawn actor node. And that's it, right? We simply go through all of the nodes that we're supposed to spawn them in, uh, that we're supposed to spawn in, and we spawn them in. Easy as pie. What's all this crap out here? What's, what's, what's with all this then? Well, that's the thing. As you create, you're going to realize that you need to do a lot more stuff. You're going to need to do this special thing and that special case, and we're going to need to have this run and that do that thing. And for me, that's when the blueprints can sort of get out of control. They can start to get very complicated. So I'm going to teach you some compartmentalization tricks. For example, I realized that I had to attach the actor to the ship so that when we move the ship, the engines come along with it, right? And initially, I simply put this right over here. I, I simply, it was right here. But then I realized I also had to keep track of all of the actors on the ship, because if I delete the ship, I want to delete all of the actors that were attached to the ship as well, and stuff like that, right? So I also had to have a special a function, to or a special array of things we have spawned into the game world, so that I can unspawn them when I need to later. And initially I put 
that over here as well. And then I realized, oh, you know what? What if the player changes the name or the channel or the default state? I need to save and load those values as well. So that's another set of nodes, another set of operations. And I originally put that also on this chain, but it was starting to get pretty blobby. And then I was like, okay, well, I also need to keep track of if it's a ship system, like I need to know that I have engines attached and I need to know that I have reactors attached. And I need to, you know, know if it's a control panel so that I can tell it that it needs to talk to me, the ship. And all of these special cases started to grow and grow and grow and grow and grow. And at some point you realize that you can't immediately figure out what nodes are doing what. And that is the key to understanding how to keep control of your blueprints, at least for me. The second I look at a blueprint and I realize that I don't know exactly what a set of nodes does, I immediately partition them off. I immediately comment them, move them around, put them in a chain, whatever I need to do in order to make it clearer. Just, it's automatic at this point. So for example, over here we've got the attach and track. I just boxed it. I, I boxed these nodes up, hit C for comment, and typed in attach and, attach and track. And at the time, they were in a larger mess of nodes. And then for customizations, I just realized I didn't know what was going on here when I looked at it once, so I hit C and I made it work. And of course, when you're looking at blueprints at this range, you're never going to know what nodes do because you can't see what the nodes are. So you're always going to be commenting, you're always going to be breaking it apart and moving things around so that you can understand them better. In addition to simply surrounding things with boxes and hitting C, uh, there are a couple of other things you can do to try and keep control of your complexity and your best friend is the sequence block. This sequence block really helps to contain the complexity of your setup because it partitions off each chunk of functionality into its own line of code. So if I did this attach and track stuff and then I piped it down here like this, I would either have to have a really long horizontal row or I would have these vertical rows still, but there would be like S-shaped curves leading between them, and that can get a little bit complicated if we've got forking. So for example here, I've got this branch, and then it goes off to initialize, and then there's a false, right? Well, I want the false and the after the initialize to go the same place. So my choices are, I can either manually merge them together into a single execution line after the fact, and then wrap them back around to the next line, or I can just use a sequence. So no matter what I do to this set, of codes, no matter how this operator moves through, I don't have to worry about the fact that I might be screwing up something more complicated down the line because I forgot to hook up uh, a little line. You know, I, I don't have to worry about hooking things up because it's all a sequence. This is a, I'll show you another example of this a little bit later because it's such a critically important thing, but this allows us to think about each of these core operations as its own chunk of code its own little sub-function, its own line, which lets us modify it and manipulate it without worrying too much about whether or not we're screwing up anything else in the graph. Another really, really common trick is to just use local variables. See this? Set the current actor. You see this down here, this line? A lot of people will have a million of these floating around their blueprint, and I find that to be a huge issue. It becomes very hard to tell what's going on for me if there's a million of these lines everywhere. So I use local variables. I use them a lot. And you can see that that current actor shows up in nearly every single node throughout the rest of the setup. And I could have just put a blue line from here to every single one of them. And initially that's what I did. But when it started to get larger and larger and larger, I realized that it was becoming an impediment to figuring out what was actually going on. So I just stuck it in a local variable and then connected everybody to the local variable. Much cleaner. And one of the other tricks you're gonna wanna use is stick it in a function. So here I've got this register actor function, which just takes in the current actor so what's that do? Oh, it's more stuff. Initially, this stuff was in the same function. It was 
just a giant blob of mess coming out. But I realized that what I did with each individual actor after the initial, you know, stapling it onto the ship was going to change. I didn't have a strong idea of exactly what I needed to do with each actor after, you know, the very most, most basic stuff. So when I was uncertain about it, I just put it off in its own function. And I said, well, all of the uncertainty will be contained within this function. And you can see how this is way down here and these are up here. And that's because I did a lot of work here. I've got this little sawtooth where one of these prongs is missing. I had a lot of special cases. Eventually, I winnowed them down into two special cases. If we are a, si sh if we are a ship system, like an engine or a reactor or whatever, we add ourselves to a list of ship systems and we attach an event so that we'll know to check if anything changes. If an engine turns on or gets broken, we know to check and make sure that we have the correct numbers for our thrust and stuff like that. And if it's a control panel, tell the control panel to talk to us. Pretty basic, right? But previously, there were like four special cases, and I wasn't really sure exactly what needed to be customized when. So I had this function, and I, you know, pushed things up, moved things down, refactored a little bit, and came out with this. And I could do that because I had broken it up with a sequencer. So each special case was its own line, and I could edit each special case individually. And when I was done with a special case and didn't need it anymore, I could just delete it without having to worry about whether or not it was properly chained or whatever. And then at the end, we just return. <laughs> this is the basic way that I think about keeping my code clean. And while I did make this a little bit cleaner than I normally do, it's not that much cleaner than I normally make. For example, if we were going to open up a competitor, uh, a different class, like a ship system, this is how I do it. And you can see that I've broken it up so that we can have a clear idea of what's happening when. I've got the sequence set up. I've got the comments. I've got a little bit of floating debris down here, which I don't comment, but I could if I needed to. It's all about making sure that you understand how it's partitioned. Like if you are ever confused when you look at a, at a graph, if you're ever concerned that you might not remember or you have to think for a second about what things are doing what, you need to comment it. You need to break it apart. You need to put it into a sequence block. That way you will be able to edit it later, work with it later. Here's another one. Obviously, I don't do this for every single graph. This is a method of containing complexity. So if your graph isn't complex, you don't do it. And similarly, you grow this as the graph becomes more complex. If we were to look at, say, turn off, this doesn't have any of those because it is too simple to need them. It is a single purpose function. And that's true over here in the ship core as well. I've got several functions that aren't that complicated. For example, this one is just complicated enough to require a single comment block. Now I could break this apart into a much cleaner set with a sequence. You see this down here? We've got these two lines coming off the false and the in this fall through, exactly like I was talking about with the other uh, you know, with instantiate. It's exactly the same as this. So that would be a good place to put a, a sequence. I could replace those with a sequence. But I decided at the end that this wasn't complicated enough to really need me to do that kind of work just yet, so I didn't bother. But I still put it into a comment block so that I'd rem remember later. These are very basic principles, right? I'm not teaching you some kind of special method of arranging things to be, you know, as as super cool as possible. It's just a, a way to think about your complexity. If something is happening, put it in its own little area. If you're not sure what's going to happen later, maybe put it in a different function so that all the complexity is contained within that function and you can grow it and shrink it and mess with it without affecting any of the core functionality. And use sequencers. Sequencers are the best. So 
The other part of this puzzle that I've sort of held off on mentioning is events. Unreal uses events a lot, and you should because it's a really powerful way to do things. It's really important to understand what those events connect to. And this is the one thing I haven't really figured out how to put into the code base very well, and this is true in not just Blueprints, but in C++ or whatever as well. It's very hard for me to keep track of what object classes connect to what object classes. Like, does this event fire against the ship? or against the control panel, or against the specific widget on the control panel that is responsible for displaying that particular thing? What's listening to this event? What's responding to this event? Similarly, what events are firing to trigger this function? And you can track that. You can simply put a breakpoint on whatever you need to put a breakpoint on and follow through when, when you're in play mode. But I don't want to have to debug everything in play mode all the time. I want to know what's connected up. And that's something that I haven't found a good way to represent in blueprints or in code. So I've got a piece of paper here next to my keyboard, which tells me what events go where. <laughs> I wish there was a better way to do it. If you happen to know of a better way to do it, let me know and I'll make a video on, uh, on your method. <laughs> anyway, just some basics and I hope this was helpful. Have a good day.